Hey, it's Jordan with Status Quo. Yesterday, Christian Smalls, the president of Amazon Labor Union, who was instrumental in that first historic victory for Amazon Labor Union in Staten Island, testified in front of Congress. Of course, Lindsey Graham, pro-business corporate vulture, uh, was on Amazon's side. Let's hear what Christian Smalls had to say in his opening statement. Um, well, first of all, I want to address Mr. Graham. Um, first off, you know, you're, it sounded like you was talking about more of the companies and the businesses in your speech, but you forgot that the people are the ones who make this, these companies operate. And if we're not protected, and if the process for when we hold these companies accountable is not working for us, then... That's not what, that's the reason why we're here today. That's the reason why I'm here to represent the workers who make these companies go. And I think that it's in your best interest to realize that it's not a, a left or right thing. It's not a Democrat or a Republican thing. It's a workers thing. It's a workers issue. And we're the ones that are suffering in the corporations that you're talking about and the businesses that you're talking about and the warehouses that you're talking about. So. That's the reason why I think I was invited today to speak on that behalf. And you should listen because we do represent your constituents as well. Um, so just take that into consideration. Uh, needless to say, Lindsey Graham did not listen and spent the rest of uh, the hearing uh, basically giving Amazon a tongue bath and trying to make it seem that Christian Smalls, it's his opinion that Amazon is union busting and essentially exploiting workers, basically killing workers, uh, giving them long-term uh, long injuries, things like that. He, ha he doesn't have facts to back it up, according to Lindsey Graham. But I digress. Uh, that was good to see uh, Christian Smalls taking it to Lindsey Graham, particularly wearing his Eat the Rich shirt uh, while testifying. But Christian then took it a step further uh, he met with uh, Union Man. Remember, Biden is a union guy. Uh, he met with President Biden in uh, the Oval Office. Uh, let's take a look at these photos. Again, Smalls going into the Oval Office next to the president and vice president wearing the Eat the Rich uh, jacket. I mean, got to love it. Got to love it. But Biden, who has made a career out of being a uh, bullshit artist and a fake working class hero, uh, and a union guy, as I reported over and over during the campaign, this is a man that uh, fundraised God knows how much money, millions from union busting companies like Comcast, actually a VP at Comcast, which owns MSNBC and NBC, literally held his first fundraiser after he announced his run in 2020. Uh, he's taking money from massive corporations that union bust. Uh, he obviously was a cheerleader and pushed for NAFTA and other uh laws that destroyed labor unions in this country, but he has had support among the AFL-CIO and other unions who apparently don't care that he has screwed them and apparently are easily hoodwinked by the lunch bucket Joe talk. But in the same breath as Biden is, uh, you know, doing photo ops with Christian Smalls and doing, pre doing speeches where he says, Amazon, here we come. Well, He's been selling out the Amazon workers and us. Shocker. Uh, great reporting from The Lever. Let's take a look. Um, Amazon gets huge contract despite Biden's union pledge. The president promised to halt federal contracts to union busters, but the deal was just rewarded to Amazon while the company was crushing a union drive. The Biden administration has rewarded a massive 10 billion federal contract to Amazon, even as the president is facing mounting pressure to fulfill his promise to halt such contracts to companies that refuse to remain neutral in union elections. The contract decision came as Amazon responded to its workers' first successful union drive by busting the organizing drive that followed. At issue is Biden's 2020 promise to, quote, ensure federal contracts only go to employers who sign neutrality agreements committing not to run anti-union campaigns. Amid revelations of Amazon's aggressive efforts to shut down a union drive among its workers, Senator Bernie Sanders last month sent a letter to Biden, quote, asking you to fulfill that promise to make sure that federal dollars do not flow into the hands of unscrupulous employers who engage in union busting, participate in wage theft, or violate labor law. 
A day later, NextGov reported that the Biden's National Security Agency, NSA, ratified a $10 billion cloud computing contract for Amazon, which hired the brother of Biden's top aide as a lobbyist days after the 2020 presidential election, restoring the soul of America. The contract for the company's web services division is codenamed, quote, wild and stormy, huh. and is distinct from another massive Pentagon cloud contract on which Amazon is also currently bidding. A few days after Amazon received the NSA contract, the Amazon labor union lost its second union election bid by a two to one margin at another Staten Island warehouse after Amazon mounted a furious campaign to halt the organizing drive. So Amazon, here we come. I guess he meant here's another 10 billion. I mean, none of this is breaking news. None of this is shocking, but this is the political world we live in where people like Joe Biden, aided by the corporate media, it is a giant marketing and branding exercise. And he, during the campaign and for years before, has successfully branded himself as Lunch Bucket Joe. As my, my father said, uh, dignity comes with a paycheck. And other bullshit working class platitudes he gave. When in reality, he has done more than most politicians to crush unions. He doesn't actually plan on threatening Amazon. He doesn't actually plan on going after union busting. He's rewarding them. His administration is rewarding them as they cover up time and time again, the utter, according to the workers, slave conditions in these warehouses. He is awarding Amazon after as I reported, covering this Amazon union organizing campaign for over a year, workers are being carted off on stretchers because of the heat. Workers are being threatened by managers. Workers who work full time and overtime are living in their cars because they can't afford to live in New York City off of what Amazon's paying. Workers are being were forced to sit through mandatory union busting sessions, not one time, not two times, 10 times, 11 times, including workers that work the overnight shift. I mean, the list goes on and on. Amazon screwing workers out of disability. Amazon managers sexually harassing female employees. I could go on and on. This is who Biden, on, in one breath, says, we're coming for you, Amazon. On the other end, giving them $10 billion. Not to mention, during COVID, begging Amazon to help with vaccine di distribution and getting the vac vaccination numbers up. This is why I call it the United Corporations of America. It's all smoke and mirrors. He doesn't care about workers. The Democratic Party doesn't care about workers. Of course, the Republican Party doesn't either. They care about marketing. They care about sloganeering. They care about putting an image out there that they're the party of the people. But the reality is, who funds their campaigns? Who funds the presidential campaigns, the Senate campaigns, the House campaigns? Jeff Bezos, Amazon. Who pays off the politicians, Amazon's army of lobbyists who spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year to buy off the Biden administration and Congress. Now, I've gotten to know Christian Smalls for quite a bit. I wouldn't be fooled by that photo op. I think he knows who he's dealing with. I don't think he's seduced or co-opted or fooled by Biden. But for all those folks out there that are sick of the two-party duopoly, that are sick of electoral politics, uh, you know, maybe have been working on uh, building third parties, this and that. Organizing and labor is where it's at right now, in my opinion, outside of electoral politics. Christian Smalls is someone they take seriously. That's why he was invited into the White House. They view him as a threat. They view what he and his uh, comrades in Staten Island were able to do as a massive threat to the oligarchy and their donors and Starbucks and the uh, historic momentum they have. Over 250 stores have filed for a union, and I believe over 50 have successfully unionized. The Democratic Party, they could feed you platitudes till we're blue in the face. They don't want stronger labor unions. Their donors don't want stronger labor unions, and the media don't want labor unions stronger. They don't want the unionization rate in this country to go up because as the unionization uh, rate in this country has basically been, I mean, decimated over the last 30, 40 years. As that went down, what went up? Corporate power, politicians becoming millionaires. Seriously, politicians becoming millionaires. 
uh, consolidated control in terms of uh, corporations and Washington, D.C., massive inequality. It's all connected. So kudos to Christian Smalls for socking it to Lindsey Graham. And hey, we're going to have to continue calling out Biden and his bullshit lunch bucket Joe. And this is honestly, I mean, the tragedy of Bernie Sanders campaigns. He had the opportunity to call out this corruption. He had the opportunity to call out Biden's corruption, his hypocrisy, his phony branding, the fact that he helped push for NAFTA which decimated labor unions, the fact that he helped push for welfare reform, the fact that he was a cheerleader for TPP, the fact that he was doing the bidding of banks in Delaware, which also is connected to labor. But Bernie wouldn't go there because it's my friend Joe. What are you going to do? Thanks for watching. And remember, sign up as a member to Status Coup at statuscoup.com slash join. Support our on-the-ground reporting for as low as 5 to $10 a month. And sign up for our text list, statuscoup.com slash text, so you'll get a text message when we're live.